Hi everybody, so what we have here is a little table set up with different uh, projects and uh, starting dates along with the number of days that we have planned to work on each of these projects to complete them. And the table has a number of different columns uh, that's going to show a projected date uh, for each of these projects to be done so or finished. So what we have here is the uh, the first one here starts on the 18th of January. It goes for about 184 days. We need to know what that date would be 184 days from then. So we're assuming that we want to do is uh, work, you know, Monday through Sunday, uh, no days off, just working straight, you know, seven days a week. What we can do in that kind of situation is come up with a formula that basically takes the date and then we add the 184 days to it. All right. And the way we do that is we go over to here, we put our equal in. All right. And then we just click on to this date right there, hit our plus, and then go with uh, this date here. Enter that in. And that gives us the uh, projected date. And we can go ahead and just double click that and copy it down. And there we go. So that's what we have now each of the projects uh, working that, that number of days, seven days a week. I'm going to go and just kind of click onto here and tell it to fill without formatting and that way I can get back my, my little border there. Not a big deal. Now, now for our next projection, what we want to do is not work Saturdays and Sundays. So we're just working Monday through Friday, five days a week. Um, so what this function that we're going to be doing, which is the uh, workday function, it's going to figure out what that projected date is based on the fact that we're not working Saturdays nor Sundays. All right. So what we do there is we hit our little equal there. We type in W O you'll see work day. We'll just do a double click on that. What it's looking for is the start date and we click onto that. All right. And then we put a comma in there and then we go with the number of days. So we click onto that, enter it in and there we go. So we'll go ahead and we'll copy that down. We'll click onto there. There we go. So as you can see, not working in the Saturdays and Sundays every week really kind of projects this out quite a bit. So that's a really good, good little tool there. Now for this next one, it's going to be the same as we just did. Plus we're going to have a jump over the holidays as well. So we're not working any of these holidays. So any of these holidays that falls within the ranges here, will be skipped over and extend us even further out. So how do we do that? Pretty much the same way. Do our equal, our WO, double click on the work day there. All right. And then we'll do our start date, comma, and the number of days. And then what we do is another comma, and then we select our dates. And you can have these anywhere. All right. But in this case, we'll go ahead and we'll take that and we'll select it all the way down to there. All right. Now, one thing we have to keep in mind is that we're going to be copying this formula down. So the first two parts, the B3 and the C3, we want those to shift down as we're copying it down, but we don't want this to shift at all. All right. So we need to lock that in, make it what we call absolute. So what you do right after you've get done, gotten done selecting it, you just go ahead and hit your F4 key. That'll make it absolute. That's all we got to do. Hit the enter key. And that's it. And we'll go ahead and uh, do the usual copy of that one and do our thing there. So now it does extend out uh, a bit, you know, because each of these kind of fell into some of the uh, ranges of the, uh, of the holidays. So a uh, big difference there as well. Now in some geographic areas around the world, um, instead of Saturday and Sunday being uh, the weekend, it's Sunday and Monday. All right. So how do we work that? All right. And you might say to yourself, does that really make much of a difference? It does slightly. Um, and because you're trying to make this thing perfect so that we know exactly that that finished date, uh, it's, it's important to know how to do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the uh, international version of Workday to make this happen. So what we'll do is we'll go back over to here. We'll type in our equal W-O. And we'll go with the Workday International. There we go. Okay, so we pretty much do it the same as we've done before. The uh, first thing it wants to know the start date. Well, okay, here's the start date, all right? And then a comma. 
then there's no number of days. Well, there's a number of days, then a comma, and then it pops up to show or to display what are considered to be the weekends or weekend day, whatever it happens to be. In our case, it's going to be number two, which is the Sunday, Monday, right? So we type in the number two, all right? Enter that in, and there we go. And as you can see, let me just go ahead and copy this down. As you can see with this, the difference between, let's say, this one here, and, and which is a Sunday and Monday versus the Saturday and Sunday, it's off a day there, pretty much the same there, uh, less, a little bit less on that one. So it just depends on how, uh, you know, what, what the range is of, of the number of days that are going to be taking to take care of that project. Now, of course, for this next one, this is going to include the holidays. And I would imagine uh, overseas or, you know, a different country, whatever, out, outside of the United States, a lot of these days are not going to be celebrated. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, of course, even in that type of situation, uh, you would put your own holidays in there, right? So, but we're just going to work off of these. So again, we'll do an equal WO Workday International, right? We have our start date, comma, number of days, comma. Uh, we'll type in the number two for the uh, Sunday Monday, comma. And then the holidays and again we'll go ahead and select this range right there and after we get done selecting it hit that f4 key to make that absolute enter it in and there we go and we can take that copy it down do our formatting there and there we go now for this next one what we have here is that uh our, our work week is basically monday through saturday and sunday is our only weekend date okay so only sundays off so what we'll do here is we'll do our equal wo again workday international all right we've got our start date comma number of days comma now in this case we're going to go with number 11 where it's sunday only so we can just type in the number 11 just like that comma and once again uh well, actually that's all we'd have to do on that one so to do that, and then enter that in, and there we go. And then we'll do exactly the same thing for this next one, uh, but we're also going to include the holidays off as well. So, so we're not working Sundays nor uh, holidays, all right? So on that one, just like before, equal, okay, we'll type in our WO, Workday International, and again, start date, all right? comma number of days comma the number 11 right so that's going to be the uh, sunday only right and then comma and then our holidays right so highlight that range once again f4 enter there we go copy that all the way down there we go Okay, so hopefully that uh, comes in handy. I think it's a, it's a good good little feature there. I, I know when I'm teaching classes, I have a lot of requests for being able to figure out, you know, uh, when a finish date would be based on, you know, holidays and, and weekends and stuff like that. So it's really good to, to know how to do that. So pretty easy uh, setup there. Now, for this next one, this is kind of like the cousin to... Um, the uh, work day and that's going to be the uh, network days now in this situation we know when we started we know when we stopped okay we need to know how many days are in between based on a number of different uh, scenarios now if it's just the fact that you work monday through sunday then you've worked every day between these two dates then it's a very simple calculation of saying equal taking the end date right minus the start date enter that in there we go and we can take that one copy it down and there we go i think that's okay with the formatting so that's it so that's pretty easy so you look at each one of those uh, sets of dates that's how many days are in between those uh given the fact that you've worked every one of those days because you work a seven day work week now this next one is going to be the fact that we don't work 
Saturdays nor Sundays, how many days are in between these two dates also skipping over holidays, right? Or I'm sorry, not holidays, but uh, weekends, right? So we'll click on here, type in equal, NET. There's our network days. So we just do a double click on that. One thing it needs to know is the start date. Well, there it is, right? Comma. And then here's the end date. There we go. And that's it. Enter that in. And there we go. So if you were working seven days a week, that's how many days are in between. But because you weren't working the Saturdays or Sundays for each of those weeks, uh, you're down to 229 days that you actually worked. Now, this next one, pretty much the same thing, except we're also going to include holidays that didn't work either during that uh, date range. So again, equal NET. There's our network days. All right, again, the start date, comma, the end date. All right, and then um, comma there. And then our uh, holidays, that would go there. And again, right after you've selected it, We'll hit the F4 key to make it absolute. Enter that in. There we go. So a few holidays in between there. Bring the number of days down as well. All right. Now this next one's where we don't work, or our weekend is actually Sunday and Monday, as opposed to Saturday and Sunday, right? So we'll go to here, and we're going to use the international version of network days. We'll type in equal NET. There's our network days, all right? And again, the start date, comma, the end date, comma, all right? And then it's gonna be number, what, number two, because of Sunday and Monday, right? There it is. So number two, comma, well, actually that's, uh, yeah, comma, and then we're gonna do the no holidays as well. So we'll go ahead and select that range, all right? There we go. And F for that. Enter that in. There we go. So not bad. And we'll go ahead and copy that one down. Of course, I screwed that up. I would meant to have that one over here. So let's just move that over. We'll just take that and move it over there. Okay. So this one. So so we we did do the one with the holiday or with the um, the holidays as well. So we're just going to do it again. Uh, without the holidays, right? So I kind of did it backwards. Sorry about that. So equal and our NET, uh, Network Days International there, right? Then we'll take our uh, start date, right? Comma, end date, right? Comma, and in this case, is what going to be what? No Sunday or Monday, so it's going to be number two, right? Enter that in, and there we go. We'll take that, copy that one down, all right? And to get it to kind of match up here a little bit, what we can do is I can take this here, right? Hit my, my little uh, format painter, right? Click over here, and there we go. So it's as if nothing ever happened. Okay, so now let's go over to the next one here, which is going to be just working um, six days, so Monday through Saturday, but not working Sundays, right? So again, we're going to be using the Network Days International for this one. So we're going to do an equal, NET, Network Days International, all right? And again, the start date, comma, the end date, comma, all right? Now in this case, it's going to be Sundays only that we're not working. So it's going to be number 11, all right? And then we'll go ahead and hit the Enter key. There we go. Can take that, copy it down. So this very last one is going to be the same as this one here, but we're also going to include not working on holidays. So no Sundays or holidays. So again, equal NET, Network Days International, right? Click onto here, comma, here, comma, 11, comma, and then our range once again, right? There we go. Make sure we hit F4. Enter that in. And there we go. Okay, we copy that one down. And we're all set. 
So again, hopefully this will come in handy for maybe some of the calculations that you're trying to do. So let's move on here. We'll go over to the uh, time card example. Okay, so for now our last example, uh, it's a little bit different. This is actually, I think, a pretty clever um, type of calculation. Uh, before, we were kind of just working with measuring how many days were between dates and so forth. In this situation, what we need to do is we're taking a start date and an ending date and figuring out how many uh, hours we worked in between. Now, we're figuring that for each day that we work, it's an eight hour day, okay? So working from this date through this date, you know, uh, eight hours a day, how many total hours do we have? Now, the way we're gonna calculate this is we're gonna be using the uh, network days uh, formula. And again, all we're gonna be doing is we're saying, okay, what's the start date? What's the end date? So we got the B3 and the C3 there, right? And then we're also gonna include the days that we didn't work in between. So we have like New Year's Eve and or New Year's Day, whatever. We've got, you know, Memorial Day, all our different uh, holidays here. So uh, if any of those holidays fall within the range here, then that's going to be that many less days worked times eight hours a day. Okay. So this is a, again, this is a pretty clever little example here. And it goes a little bit beyond what we've been doing with the other examples here. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to start over here at uh, D3, right? We'll put our equal in there. And again, we're going to do our NET. There's our network days. Double click that. And the start date is going to be here, right? Comma. And we have our finish date or end date. There we go on that one. Comma. And then we have our holidays. All right. So we'll go ahead and we'll select that range. Just like that. Uh, we'll hit the F4 key. Make that absolute. Now we're going to close off the parenthesis because we want to figure, what, what this figures out right now is how many days are in between, right? As we saw earlier. But now we want to take the number of days times eight or eight hours a day. Now if you are in that situation and maybe you work 10 hours a day or 12 hours a day, then you would do the times and then whatever the number is. In our case, we're gonna say eight hours a day, but if yours was 12, you put a 12 in there, right? So in this case, I'm gonna put the number eight, hit the enter key, and there we go. 32 hours, and we'll go ahead and we'll copy that down, and there we go. All right, now we're gonna bill them at $125 an hour. So we're gonna say equal, we're gonna take that number right there, times, and then 125, right? Enter that in, and there we go. Then we'll go ahead and we'll uh, copy that down as we have before, there we go. And we can also do like a running total if you wanted to see that. Uh, not you don't have to do this, but uh, you can do a real quick one here. And we use this formula right here. We're basically using the sum function. Uh, we're having it look at this cell right there, and as we copy it down, we're going to have this thing expand. It's pretty cool. We did this another example uh, a while back, but anyway, so we'll do our, our equal. We'll do our, we'll just type in sum, just like that. Left parenthesis, and we're going to reference basically this number right there, all right? Do a colon, and that's going to give us E3 through E3. Now, what we'll do is we'll take this one right here. So I, make, I click that a couple times to get it so where I just have the cursor kind of blinking somewhere in there. Hit the F4 key, enter that in, and there we go. So what, what that does now is when we go to copy this down, I'll show you here, copy it down, it does basically a running total. All right. So what happens is this one is saying E3 through E3. Okay, that's just that one right there, right? This is saying E through E4. E3 through E5, 6, 7, and so forth, see? Pretty clever, but that's a pretty simple one. You don't have to do it, but I just thought I'd add it in there anyway. One other thing, just to, to talk about this, uh, uh, our, our days off that we have as far as the holidays go, um, usually what you're going to have to do is kind of go through your calendar and figure out what those dates are, 
plug them in and so forth. What I have is something called the Holiday Cobobulator that I put together here. And what it does is allows you to put in today's date or today's year, whatever year you're going to be working with, right? In this case, 2025. And what it does then, it's, that part is used for each of these calculations here. So New Year's Day, if I click on it here, pretty simple one. Take the year, 1-1, one, one, it gives you that, all right, for the date. Same thing for Martin Luther King. Now, in this case, this is pretty, pretty heavy duty here, okay? These are some pretty scary looking calculations that we're doing to come up with this, but uh, that holiday is the third Monday in January. Same thing with President's Day. Uh, Easter, Easter is even worse. Look at this thing, okay? So my point to you, instead of me having to explain this, which I really can't explain, this is something that I, uh, that I, I didn't come up with this, I'll just say that. So my, my point is, is that you can do it. You can just take this example because you have this, this file that you can download. You'll have this in there. You can plug in your own uh, year um, and get rid of some of these if you need to and uh, maybe add some other ones or just add in the date itself. My point is that by this calculating like this, you can then take this like that, select it, right? Right click it, hit copy, right? And then go to whatever area that you want to go to. Go over here, let's say, right click it, and you can just type it in as far as values go or paste it in with, for values. And there you go. And you work with it that. So that's how I came up with it. But pretty, pretty cool little uh, calculation there. So anyway, appreciate you uh, watching this video. Hopefully, uh, a lot of this stuff can, can come in handy for what you're doing back at uh, work or at home. Uh, but I appreciate you watching. Take